In this lecture video, I'm going to discuss ice and rain protection systems for transport category aircraft. So ice and rain, uh, they have a few different goals of these systems. The first one is to is for lift production to to protect the ability of the wings and the tail, uh, the different surfaces to produce lift. And these can be either anti-ice or de-ice in order to do that. We also want to protect the ability for the plane to produce thrust, and these are almost always anti-ice systems. And then the crew or the operators, even on the ground, uh, tech ops, maintenance, need to be able to maintain situ aware situational awareness, visibility, and the and instrumentation operation. And these can be anti-ice, anti-fog. Uh, and then finally, things like passenger services. We need to make sure that things like drains and whatnot don't ice up so that the passenger service equipment will still work. Here's an example of an aircraft and just some of the different ice protection areas. Uh, so you can see here this airplane has wing anti-ice for lift protection, nacelle anti-ice for engine uh, thrust production protection, window heat and windshield wipers to allow visibility. Total air temp and pitot tubes are heated to protect the instrument's abilities to operate. And then lavatory drains and water drain masks are so that passenger service items will be able to operate even with in cold conditions. Uh, and just a kind of a note, lavatory drains, water drain masks, these are mainly things like hand washing sinks and coffee makers and that kind of thing. It doesn't include what are known, items known as gray water. It doesn't include black water, which is the toilets that is stored on board the aircraft and, and pumped out once the airplane lands. So ice and rain protection can take a couple forms. The first one is if we prevent ice from building up in the first place, it's known as anti-ice. Um, ice removal is known as de-ice, and then rain pr protection is primarily concerned with visibility during takeoff, taxi, and landing. Once the airplane's up and flying, if visibility is poor, the crew is likely going to be flying the airplane under uh, instrument instrument flight anyways. They don't; these are rarely operated under VFR or visual flight rules. They're almost under IFR instrument flight rules when flying any kind of transport aircraft. Icing prevention, anti-ice can come in many forms. One of the most common is thermal electric, and that's what's shown here. So this is a pitot tube, and the end of it is heated using, uh, using a resistive heating device. So, so electric current is run through a resistor uh, or a resistive area, and that causes it to warm up. This is often, often used on things called TAT, or total air temp probe, so the outside air temperature probe. Um, angle of attack probe, or angle of attack indicators, the windows themselves, drain masts, some engine inlets, in some cases I use thermal electric. Uh, oftentimes propellers on turboprops will be thermal electric. And then in some cases, some wings and even stabilizers are. In fact, the, uh, the Boeing 787 is almost all thermal electric, including the wings and stabilizers. Some of these, the heated windshield shown here, uh, are multiple layers of um, either acrylic or strengthened glass or some combination of the two. And they're going to have a layer, a layer of anti-ice uh, right below the outermost. So on both these images, the top surface, uh, the thermally tempered glass and the strengthened glass, that is the outer layer that would be exposed to the airstream. Um, the inner layers, you can see there's several layers typically of acrylic or um, polyurethane or other things. Um, those actually are, are pretty far away and pretty well insulated from the anti-ice system. So the anti-ice system is going to warm that outer glass. Uh, the inner side of it is going to be kept clear of fog and that kind of thing in other ways, usually using air. But um, ice prevention is to prevent the ice from building up on the outside of it. Another form of ice prevention is uh, pneumatic bleed air. So we use hot bleed air. We take it from the engines uh, or the APU, but typically in flight, it's going to be from the engines. And we use that. We duct it to areas like the wings, the tail, uh, engine inlets, and the insides of the windows in order to, so wings, tail, and engine inlets to prevent ice buildup. 
Uh, we also can run warm air over the insides of the windows to prevent the fog buildup. And so it, it doesn't it doesn't provide that any ice on the windshields. The windshields are almost always electrically heated, but it does keep fog from building up. And some of the components in these, particularly in the wing area and in the uh, cowl inlet, the lip, what's called the lip skin area, um, is we're going to have control valves. We don't want heat going to these things all the time, especially if it's not icing conditions. We don't need them. And inside, just underneath the leading edge, uh, there's something called a piccolo tube. And so this is kind of one, one drawing of it that shows a cutaway of the leading edge on the lower right. And what this does is air is, that's an air duct, the circular part there is an air duct that runs along the length of the leading edge. Air tra hot air travels through that and it has holes drilled in it at regular intervals where the air can then come out and it then travels and fills the space inside the leading edge uh, and warms that leading edge from the inside out. Uh, so this is kind of one view of it and to control it there may be various switches and sensors along the length of the leading edge. Here's uh, another view of it. Uh, this one's a little more pictorial that kind of shows the skin cutaway. So that hot air running through that duct and that duct because it, it kind of resembles a piccolo uh, or, a, or a flute. So they call it a piccolo tube. It's got all these little holes and the air travels out the holes, fills that, that space inside the leading edge. And then it has to, to keep the air moving. It has to be able to exhaust. So there's typically holes in the bottom or vents in the bottom of the leading edge. Uh, that are the exhaust holes and that that hot air that's now been used it's cooled down by this point by the surf by by flowing across the inside surface uh, goes out the exhaust holes as more hot air comes in through the piccolo tube uh, and again these are controlled by switches and sensors in order to prevent the wings from being overheated or to make sure that heat is getting to the entire length of the wing you wouldn't want to have a blockage somewhere uh, or a duct come apart and, and not, not be de-icing the entire leading edge, uh, that could be a rather disastrous situation. Another form of ice protection for wings and leading edges is ice removal, and these are pneumatic boots. These are usually found on your smallest uh, transport aircraft, so small regional jets and uh, corporate aircraft and turboprops. Um, but here, the wing leading edge has a uh, these are made of a of a rubber. They're um, they are it's a rubber material. I'll remember the name at some point here. Uh, and they they run along the leading edge. They're basically a big sticker. They get stuck on. They have an airline running to them. Uh, and so an air can be sent to them, and they can be on horizontal wings and horizontal stabilizers. They can be on the vertical the 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 vertical uh, stabilizer as well, uh, but they operate in cycles. So most of the time they actually have a slight vacuum applied to them and they are pulled flat and they have a bunch of air chambers that run along the length of the surface. And so what that what happens is a small amount of ice is allowed to build up, build up on them. It needs to be enough ice that when you flex it, it breaks and cracks and falls off. Uh, so after that thin layer of ice is allowed to form, then the chambers are inflated and when those chambers inflate you get the scalloping appearance shown in the bottom here uh, and it it cracks the ice breaks it off into small pieces that then just flake off uh, because the ice really on wing on on for for lift it, it really builds up at the leading edge you don't get a lot of ice further back this is while flying. It's not going to, in neither case, you know, same thing with the heated leading edges. It's really only the very forward part of the leading edge that's heated. Uh, the, the top and bottom surface of the wing uh, don't build up snow and ice in flight. The only time that gets built up on the ground, and that's going to be removed on the ground using uh, de-ice trucks, an external de-icing system. For crews to be aware or be made aware of ice, they're going to have an ice detector on the aircraft. Uh, and these are the, the common design today uh, is their piezoelectric ice detection probes. And they work similar. We talked about the densitometers in the fuel in the fuel lecture that are piezoelectric based. So it's a uh, it's a crystal crystalline material that has uh, alternating current run through it causes it to vibrate. 
In this case, they're showing one that vibrates at 40,000 cycles per second or 40 kilohertz. Uh, and it vibrates this little kind of pin that sticks out the end, this probe. Uh, and then that, then there's a second coil that's what's known as the pickup coil. And so that, that vibration is picked up by the pickup coil. Uh, and under normal conditions, it matches. But as ice builds up, if ice were to build up on this, that's going to slow the vibration. And so that pickup coil will note will will see a slower vibration. And that indicates that ice has built up. And so what happens then is these have a heating element in them as well that's normally off. But once ice has built up, the heating element will come on. It will clear that ice and then it'll shut off again. And then it's waiting to see if ice builds up again. And these can provide an indication in the flight deck. And oftentimes that indication, uh, they have to get a certain amount of ice build up. They have to build up ice at least two times in a given period of time. And then they'll, continuing, they'll continue that cycle of heating to clear the ice, shutting off, seeing if ice builds up. And they'll keep doing that. And as long as the ice keeps building up, that ice indication will stay. But then if they do a cycle like that and they all have, they have timers in them and that kind of thing, if they do a cycle and then the, the heater shuts off and then no ice builds up over a period of time, then it will turn off the ice indication in the flight deck. And in some cases, these aren't just doing an indication, they're tied into like an, an anti-ice or an ice protection computer that also automatically can control things like leading edge ice protection control things like pedo, static, uh, angle of attack indication, uh, electric heaters, or even windshield heaters. The last part here is for visibility's sake, aircraft have to have rain and fog protection. And so rain, the most common thing you see today is our windshield wipers. And there's some shown here, and these are pretty heavy duty. Uh, they, they, work just like windshield wipers in a car, but they they have a lot more force that they push down with. And so a big thing we got to be careful with is maintainers of these is if we test them, uh, we got to make sure they, they only are to be run when the windows uh, have uh, moisture on them. And so you have to often spray the windows down with a spray bottle of water if you're going to test these. And also make sure they're clean. Any kind of the the glass on the windshields of aircraft are particularly prone to scratching. And so any kind of dust or dirt that gets between the blade, the windshield wiper blade and the surface can be scratched. And so we have to uh, be careful of that. Some aircraft also have rain repellent systems. They can spray almost, uh, almost they can spray a liquid on the windows uh, that causes it to beat. It works almost like a rain X type system. Uh, and they have little nozzles down at the base of the windows and liquid is pumped to those. The, the, the rain repellent uh, liquid comes from a reservoir or a cartridge that's often in the flight deck. Uh, and that sprays that on the outside of the windows and it, it, does, it's, it works like Rain-X where it causes moisture to bead and, and move off the window. On the inside, the environmental control system warm air will be routed from that to the insides of the windows and that prevents fog and moisture buildup on the inside surface of the windows uh, and that's to allow for uh, crew visibility that's really only used on the ground once the airplane's flying uh, the the need to see outside is minimal uh, up at crews and that kind of thing and so these are used primarily for ground operations and then are shut off uh, the, the windshield wipers, rain repellent would be shut off. The warm air, the ECS systems, the fog prevention, those tend to run because they're just, they're also providing heat. Uh, they're, they're some of the heat that's provided to the flight deck. And so those are going to run majority of the flight. Well, that wraps up uh, everything that I'm going to present on ice and rain protection.